Mark Twain once said, the difference between the almost right word and the right word is the difference between the lightning bug and the lightning bolt. This is as true for poetry and prose as I hope to convince you that it is for life itself. Now over here I've charted out two maps. One you can read on your own, but I'm here to teach you how to read this more jumbled language. But don't worry, you're already fluent. In the map on the left, the O's, U's, and H's in these words are all in the same position. But just a few mutations to the surrounding letters is all it takes to completely change the pronunciation and meaning of each of these words. So bearing this in mind, we're going to unpack this language. You never knew. You already spoke. The map on the right borrows Latin letters, but they represent something more concrete to biologists. Each letter represents one of the 20 amino acids, the building blocks for life. Amino acids are bonded together in long chains called proteins, and just like language, if you rearrange the amino acids or make any substitutions, you get a different protein. This map then tells the story of how evolution tinkers with the spelling of its proteins. Great, now we're ready for some vocabulary. Today we're going to focus on just one protein called a sodium channel, and its function is so crucial to your survival that deleting it would stop you dead in your tracks. Every heartbeat, every twitch, every thought you've ever had, every breath you take, that's sodium channels. So you can imagine how blocking these channels would be just devastating. Well, newts like this smug little thing here produce a toxin that does just that, and it's one of the most lethal compounds on Earth. Surprisingly, garter snakes from along the west coast of North America can easily eat these toxic newts. They do this, of course, by playing around with the spelling of their sodium channels. These adaptive mutations change the snake's lock so the newt's key won't fit. But how do these snakes go about making these changes? To answer this question, I reconstructed every possible step between the toxin-sensitive and the toxin-resistant sodium channels, and then I measured the performance of each different mutant. Essentially, I answered the age-old question. How much sodium could a sodium channel channel if a sodium channel could channel sodium? And when you stack that up against how much toxin each different mutant can withstand, we start to get a sense of evolution's cost-benefit analysis. The bang is increased toxin resistance, and the buck is how much performance they lose in exchange. So at every step, they're making the most economical decision. Of these many possible paths, then, the most likely path follows the arrows. The other dead ends were just too difficult. Our snakes, therefore, followed the path of least evolutionary resistance to greatest toxin resistance. By studying the path evolution takes and seeing that not all paths are possible, we can see that evolution has limitations and is often predictable. This is powerful information because many traits are at their adaptive limits, evolutionary dead ends holding the species back. For our sodium channels, there's only so many spelling errors we can make before they're non-functional. If we extend this idea to all living species, we'll find that many are as adapted as they're ever going to be to their environmental challenges. That is to say, some species may not be able to out-evolve their escalating threats. Experiments that reconstruct the past can provide us the prescience to protect those species facing evolutionary dead ends, because for them, Mark Twain's lightning bolt simply won't strike, just in the nick of time. Studying evolution can be the mason jars in which we protect our lightning bugs before the lights go out forever. Thank you very much for listening.